Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing topological subspaces. Okay, so we've now seen how to build a topological subspace. If you have a topological space, which is a set capital X with a topology tau on it, then you can take any subset of your uh, topological space and turn this into a topological space in its own right, which we'll call the topological subspace. Okay, and the way that you can do this is just by equipping it with the inherited topology from the larger topological space, which is called tau and then restricted to the subset capital S, which just consists of all of the open sets from the larger topological space intersected with the subset capital S, so that they now become uh, subsets of the set capital S. So you just take the portions of the open sets from the uh, larger topological space, which are inside the subset capital S, and you call them your open sets uh, in this uh, smaller set capital S, okay? And that's what is meant by the restricted topology from the larger topological space down to the subset capital S. Now, why is uh, this uh, such a useful concept? Well, the really useful thing about this is if we consider a continuous map between two topological spaces, and then we restrict our attention down to a subset of the domain topological space, then uh, if we restrict the map to that uh, subset of the domain topological space, then if we equip that subset with the inherited topology from the larger topological space on it, then the map remains a continuous map. So let me uh, discuss this in more detail. So we'll go over the page and discuss this in more detail. Okay, so let's start off just with a reminder of what a continuous map between two topological spaces is. Okay, so let's say here we have a topological space X with a topology tau X on it here. So let's colour this topological space in in red here. Okay, and let's say we've got another topological space, which we'll call Y over here, which will have a topology tau subscript Y here. Okay, and we'll colour this topological space in an orange here. Okay, so now what you need is a mapping between them, a function between them. Okay, uh, so this is just going to be a mapping which sends every single element of our domain topological space X here onto elements in the co-domain topological space over here. So here's our map F, and I'll remind you of what it means for a function to be continuous. So a function is going to be called continuous if for all open sets in the co-domain topological space, okay, uh, the pre-image of them in the domain topological space has to be an open set back here. So written down for all, let's say V, which is an element of the topology on the codomain topological space. So take any open set in your codomain topological space here. So V is some uh, open set in your codomain topological space. It must be the case. So it must be true. It must be true that the pre-image of this open set under the map F, which I'll write F inverse of V, so this just means all the elements in the domain topological space which are mapped into this subset V, onto an element in this subset V uh, in the codomain topological space, so that's what is meant by the pre-image of this uh, subset V. This has to be an open set in the domain topological space, so this must be an element of tau x. Okay, so here's my picture of the pre-image of the uh, subset v uh, in the domain topological space here. So here is v, and here is the pre-image of v in the domain topological space. Okay, and I'm insisting that this pre-image must be in the topology on the domain topological space, and that has to be true no matter what open set you use from the uh, codomain topological space's topology. Okay, so that's the definition of a continuous function then. So, now let's have a look at what happens if we restrict our attention down to some subset of our domain topological space. So let's say, now what I care about is a subset of my initial domain topological space. So let's say this 
rectangle here is going to be my subset of interest. So I'll highlight it in vivid purple here. So this is going to be the subset X. Okay, and what I now want to do is instead of considering F as being a mapping from the entire of X to the uh, set Y, I want to just restrict my attention down to the mapping which maps all of the elements of this subset S onto elements of Y. And we will call that mapping F restricted to the subset S. So this is a perfectly good mapping. It's going to take all of the elements of this set capital S, which is a set in its own right, and it's going to map them onto elements in the set Y. And the way that, of course, it will do it is it will just map them onto the exact same elements as the mapping F did. Okay, it's just it won't give us any information about what happens to all of the elements that are outside of S. Okay, so we're just restricting our attention down to S now. Okay, so this is the mapping F restricted down to the subset capital S. And my claim is that if you now view this as a function in its own right, so imagine, oops, imagine that this portion has now gone. Okay, and we've got our subset S here, which is now a set in its own right, so you don't even need to view it as a subset anymore because the rest is gone. I claim that this function F from this set capital S to the set Y is going to be continuous if we put on this set capital S the inherited topology from uh, the larger topological space X. So my claim is that this function, which is going to map S with the inherited topology tau x restricted down to s onto the topological space y with the topology tau y, I claim that this will still be a continuous function. Okay? Um, so, uh, and that's providing that we use this inherited topology. So you can't just come up with some brand new topology, it must be the inherited topology. Now, that's a reasonably intuitive uh, theorem to be true. Okay, but it does require proof, so let's just give the proof, and it's a very simple proof. Okay, so what do we need to be true? And imagine that that portion's gone now. Okay, we need it to be true that if we take any open set in our codomain topological space over here, so any open set, that the pre-image of that in the domain topological space, which is in purple now, has to be an open set there. Well, what is going to be the pre-image of any open set uh, from our uh, code main topological space now under this uh, mapping F restricted down to S? Well, when we originally had the mapping from the topological space X to the topological space Y, here was the pre-image. But what's the pre-image going to be now? Well, it's only going to be those elements of the pre-image in X that are actually still in S. It's not going to be all of this bit that's outside of S because, of course, we don't have those elements anymore. We're imagining we've got rid of those. Okay, so now the pre-image of uh, V here under this restricted map F, so what I can write is F restricted down to S inverse of this open set V, it's just going to be the pre-image of V in the topological space X, so F inverse V, intersect S. Okay, now what we want to prove is that that's going to be in the inherited topology here, the topology tau X restricted down to S. But why is that going to be true? Well, because look at this definition, well, not definition, look at this equation that I've got here for uh, the pre-image of my open set in the codomain topological space. Okay, it's just going to be this thing here which we know is an open set in our larger topological space, this is in tau of x, intersect with s. And the definition of my inherited topology here, tau x restricted down to s, is just all of these open sets in the larger topology, on the larger topologi topological space, intersect s, restrict them down to s. Okay, so what this is actually saying is that yes, this um, pre-image of this open set V here under our mapping F restricted down to S will indeed be an open set in our uh, new topological space, this topological subspace S with the inherited uh, topology on it from the larger topological space. 
And that's why uh, this notion of an inherited uh, topology and forming topological subspaces is so important, so that we can restrict our attention just to uh, subspaces of a topological space, restrict the mapping down to just that subspace, and it will still be continuous. Okay, so with that we will end this video.